And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. How long is that? <laughs> this spiel feels like it's 15 seconds. And it looks to be about 11 or 12. So there's that. This is a very late night recording. I am uh, handling some business tomorrow. Uh, it's been three hours after work. I've been working hard. Been working hardly working, working hard. <laughs> no, I'm working hard. Uh, trying to do stuff <laughs> at work. <laughs> That's pretty much the only thing I do. Uh, so here we are, recording the constitutionals late on a. You can hear the sound machine in the background, can't you? Yeah, you probably can. That's crazy. <laughs> but who knows? This microphone surprised me when there was construction outside last week, and it was the loudest construction, or last week, two weeks ago, it was the loudest construction I'd ever heard in my life. And, and and it did, it barely picked it up because it was in cardioid and co- cardioid cardioid B <laughs> and there we go that's gonna be Cardi Cardi B's uh, um, her specialty microphone cardioid B it's her special microphone that uh, only picks up her screeches skirt screet you know those noises she makes <laughs> is that what Cardi B does. Hey, let's get let's get moving on to the topics here. As I open up the Google Drive and uh, dig into the files that have the constitutional's documentation. So I guess we'll go on this in the order. Since I'm not on the couch, I can or the futon, I can do whatever I want right now. Here we go. Uh, first things first. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, do I enjoy a good uh, reference to J. Cole. Okay, this first story comes from the New York Times, written by Stephen Grosser, Grant Gold, and Aaron Griffith. Who's getting rich when Uber, Slack, and other unicorns go public? Uh, I take it to mean that unicorns, I take unicorns to mean that uh, they are these tech giants that have been ruling the app space for some time. Uh, recently, as of late, Uber has gone public. They launched their IPO uh, a little bit under what they initially, what was rumored, that what they wanted to be launched at. I think it was something around five, uh, forty-five dollars instead of forty-eight, which valued them at uh, a certain amount of money. This is not the. I don't think this is the article when I. Uh, any hoosers. <laughs> Uh, so, so, uh, so Lyft went public, I think it was a month ago at this point and they have not been performing well. In fact, let me, let me double check, uh, Lyft stock. Let's see. Cause I wanted to buy Lyft stock. I also want it. It's at 5560. So they actually then they they're, they're doing decently. Let's see what they're, I mean, they're doing better than what they were doing a couple of days ago, that's five days. Okay, let's do a month. Okay, so they are down from what they launched at. They launched at sixty something, but they're doing better. Uh, and, and and this is not any 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 this early stuff. This is not any indication of what the what it's going to mean for the company in the future. I mean, they're just valuing themselves so that they can they raise capital so that they can go public and so people can buy more and so they they can be worth more and so that they can have more money. <laughs> that's that's how investing works. I'm very stupid, so that's how I think investing works. Um, but Lyft was valued as worth as much as a uh, $25 billion, uh, when it went public in March, and uh, Uber was worth around $82 billion when it priced its public offering. So that's a little bit lower than what they wanted, which is what I remember. Uh, and this is from the investments. And we have Slack going public, uh, where well, they went public. And there's someone else who went public. Who's who's thinking about going public? Well, anyway, all so all of these, uh, all this to say is this: these 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 tech giants going public, um, and trying to get these offerings and the IPOs, it's not working out very well. And this is kind of the first of their kind because they're like we've never really had apps do something like this, you know, uh, save for. Facebook and all the other ones that are probably, I think Twitter too. Uh, but these are, these are app based businesses that make a lion's share of their money via, uh, credit and investing and, uh, people using the apps and such. So it'll be very interesting to see where, where they can go from there. What kind of, 
what what kind of what 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 this would mean for the business in the long run, uh, because once you go public, you know you have got you've got to start innovating uh, tenfold. Whereas they're a private company, they could have stayed doing the like if Apple was private, then they could have just they could make one iPhone a year still, and make gangbusters. But it's in their best interest to go public to be public, because that's how you make the money. Uh, moving on. I don't have a lot of time here, so I can't really expand on things. Moving on. Uh, this this week, or last week, really, rather, uh, and this week, too, is the upfronts, television upfronts, where networks go out, they pimp themselves to ad buyers, and they say, hey, ad buyers, these are the shows we're going to have, and this is what this is what we're touting. We're touting these types of ratings, so please buy some ad time on our shows. And the ad buyers go, yes, yes, golf clap, golf clap, yeah, yeah. Um, I've reported on this before several times, and that's what I am. I'm a, I'm a reporter. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I've reported on this several times, and uh, I've said that I've done uh, stories on the four-year consideration events that have been extremely expensive and cost you know as much as producing one television show for net for you know the broadcast networks NBC ABC Fox and CBS uh, Netflix Amazon they're they're gonna they're gonna pull out all the stops this year in terms of giant like so what happens at these um, events at these uh, these present that either at uh, for consideration events for you know the academy uh, for the Emmy voters and, or these uh, uh, TV upfronts, they throw these big lavish parties. Uh, these networks do, and they they just want to show people that they have these things. So moving on, <laughs> moving on. Uh, a couple of shows were canceled last week, but this pilot season, female directors. And this comes from Variety, written by Will Thorne. Are we're going to see more uh, representation gains? Uh, and this really goes in with the. I think I have another story. I don't. I think I talked about this story last week where uh, female directors, they have this whole initiative on NBC where they were doing these, uh, where female directors were directing episodes of Blind Spot and Brooklyn Nine Nine and all these other shows in Superstore, which was a catalyst for it. But this one is such a great thing. I'm so glad to see all these female directors coming out, doing their thing. Uh, real quick. It was announced that there's a shortlist for the new Batman movie for Matt Reeves' Batman movie. And Robert Pattinson is at the top. <laughs> it's Nicholas Holt, Robert Pattinson, Army Hammer, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. I only know this because I read the story about 10 minutes ago. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that Robert Pattinson is at the top. It should be Army Hammer or Aaron Taylor Do- Johnson. I think Nicholas Holt is fine. He's, he should, he's my number three. But it should be Army, Aaron, Nick, then Robert. <laughs> I don't know why Robert's in the conversation. I like him as an actor. I have no issue with him at all. Just don't think he should be Batman. Any Hoosers, and I, this is coming from a guy who hasn't seen a superhero movie in a long time. Uh, no, 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 that's not right. I saw, uh, I watched Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, a month and a half ago. Did not enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sick of these superhero movies. With execs at the major broadcasters making decisions and on the fate of pilots at this very moment, it's worth noting that 63 pilots ordered this season across the five major broadcast networks. So that includes the main four plus CW. 25 were directed by women. That's roughly 40%. Compare that to 2018's figure of 24 female directed pilots out of 75. That's 32%. And 2017, you only had 9% female directors across the pilots. Uh, what's real, what, what should be noted is uh, will this make the transition to and the same thing similar thing would be with uh, NBC's initiative for female and let me just say this let me preface the uh, NBC's initiative with this they had to do they did a comedy initiative for I think two years straight where they uh, uh, re- requested uh, pilots scripts be sent in by you know aspiring comedy writers and nothing came of it nothing came from it for two years nothing nothing came of it uh, so it really uh, we'll see if this stands the test of time if these women will be able to transition to more stable careers within a directing space you know uh, sh- if should this be a one-off thing then this is this is not going to help them they can say yes I directed the Batwoman pilot for CW <laughs> but that means nothing in the long run <laughs> like these 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 women need to be able to get 
more consistent jobs. More jobs consistently. Oh, that's a good title. <laughs> uh, okay. I spelled consistently wrong. Despite two no, uh, notable breakthroughs in June Wang and Jessica Yu, who are two of the first Asian American women to direct broadcast pilots in TV history, the proportion of female director pilot directors of color has stalled, sitting at 5 out of 63 or 8%. Uh, the same proportion last year. Uh, the number of, let's see. So, okay. Uh, Wang directed the untitled Jessica Gao project for ABC, while you helmed the pilot for NBC legal drama Bluff City Law, which was picked up a series. The number of African American, we can say black, number of black female directors has dropped from three in 2018 to just one. Victoria Vic Mahoney for CBS Under the Bridge. Jesus. Wow, that's something I didn't even know. And Latina ones dropped to, from three to one, too. Even Lagoria did Glamorous this year oh, for CW. Oh, my gosh. This is just disturbing. I didn't even read this article. This is really sad. This makes me feel very sad that we can't even get representation for women of color in directing. And this is this just harkens back to what I was saying about Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Yeah, women they think all women are represented in the show no they don't have a they barely have black people on that show let alone latino and asians and and all these other races in there it's crazy you can't just you can't fight one fight you gotta fight all the fights uh but then again it's hard to fight all the fights at once sometimes it is just one fight but right now this is all the fights this microphone keeps falling and i keep having to to scrunch it down uh, which is very important to note. Let's see. Katie Kane had a female director. That's a spinoff of Riverdale, a show that I stopped watching after episode three, I believe. Some beautiful teenagers on that show, but I, not teenagers. <laughs> I should not say that. Some beautiful people on that show. I don't want to watch it. It's too dramatic for me. I what I wanted, and I think, and I thought about this uh, the other week what I thought Riverdale was going to be, you know, three seasons, three seasons in now. But what I thought it was going to be, there's a show that came out in the late nineties, early two thousands called, here's a hair on this, uh, microphone. And I just put it in my mouth. <laughs> uh, there's a show called Archie's weird mysteries. And it was basically Scooby, a little bit more adult Scooby Doo, uh, featuring Archie characters. I thought it was really cool. They should do. They should have done that, uh, or an afterlife with Archie TV show, if they're going to be this dark. But I don't like it. But you know what? A lot of people do. So there you go. A lot of beautiful people in that show. CBS has the most female directors overall, with seven of their sixteen pilots directed by women. Uh, there's Beth McCarthy, Pam Fryman. Oh, I know Pam Fryman. I know Pam Fryman. Yeah, she directed for uh, NBC in 2017. I know Pam Fryman. I know her by name. Uh, but, uh, uh, Francesca Gregorini for ABC. Zolister Jones. She directed something. That was her own show called Woman Up, of course. She's great. Anyway, let's get some women behind the camera. Let's get some women everywhere. Let's do it. Moving on, uh, those brutal cancellations from last week. Very sad to see all these shows go. Lethal Weapon, uh, Star, and Buyers ending next year. Uh, two of those shows I didn't watch. I watched Lethal Weapon. I spent a lot of time on the show talking about Lethal Weapon. Murphy Brown was killed. Although they would, uh, if it was up to CBS, they would not say. They would just say it was like a one-off season. It's a limited series. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. A lot of shows are... I am so sad for Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon could have survived if they, if they just had Clang Crawford and uh, Damon Wayans sit down and talk. But they had to go and kill a, a main character and and then they aired it in such a disparaging way. 16 episodes. You know, a couple weeks on, a couple weeks off. I didn't like it. Happy Together star... Speaking of Damon Wayans. His son, Damon Wayans Jr., and Amber Stevens West. They started Happy Together on CBS, got canceled. Fam was canceled on CBS as well. See, uh, 
this is kind of this is par for the course for CBS because they have multicams that air every single season, and a lot of them don't make it. But I'm very surprised that the neighborhood made it. I mean, again, I I think every Gary Cole was in this show called Fam with Lena Dobrev from Game of Thrones, uh, which goes which harkens back to my theory that if you're on a very popular show like Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead. You're never going to be like, that's the height of your career. It's all going to be <laughs> plateaued or downhill, <laughs> which is, which is sad, but it's funny. I mean, but it's true. It's funny, which is funny, but it's sad and true. Well, I mean, look, look at the, uh, kid Harrington. He's not, he's not going to have a, another hit. Pompeii. Come on. Uh, Massey Williams. Yeah, sure. She's the, one of the most popular, uh, uh little women in the world. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, come on. Who, Lena Headley, Lena Hetty? Well, no, the guy who plays uh, Nicholas Wojciechowski, who plays Jamie Lannister. No, these you're not gonna. None of these people are gonna have any, any like Sophie Turner. Yes, she's gorgeous. She's married to a Jonas, I think. <laughs> and and you know you can have all the money in the world. These people have all the money in the world. They're just not gonna be able. With the exception of Peter Dinklage, who I think can land any role he wants, but everyone else, they're just not gonna be able to. Uh, recover from this. No offense to them. Any users. Gary Cole was in Fam uh, with Nina Dobrev. Both of those people I like. And that show was canceled. I didn't even know it was on. I knew it was going to air at some point. I saw a trailer a couple of months ago. I didn't know it was on. Uh, or else I would have checked out the pilot. Happy Together was fine. I love Damon Wayans Jr. and Amber Stevens West. West. They're both great people. The Fix was canceled. Marvel's uh, The Gifted was canceled on Fox, which sucks because I've that show has uh, from day one has been in my Hulu queue f- from the first episode, and I just and I and like every day, <laughs> every single I was I would always think like every month I'd be like okay it's time to watch The Gifted and I go nah I don't feel like watching a drama right now an hour long drama, and that's why I never watched that show. Cool Kids was canceled. I feel bad was canceled on NBC, although that was kind of, <laughs> if you're asking me, that that show was canceled a long time ago. I feel bad. No offense. Uh, cool Kids had a good group of actors, too. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. Jane the Virgin was canceled. The Big Bang Theory was canceled. Gotham canceled. Elementary canceled. I mean, we knew those shows were ending, though. Those shows were planned to be ending. Speechless was canceled. Very sad. Very, very sad day for me. Uh, but their third... Oh, this is disrespectful, what this person wrote on Deadline. The mini driver-led Speechless is going silent after three seasons. Okay, come on. It's about a kid with cerebral palsy and he can't speak. Come on, guys. There's a time for jokes. and they do, The time is not now. <laughs> the time is 10.42. <laughs> I'm wearing a watch. I don't know why I looked over at the Home Hub. Google renamed its Home Hub to the Google Nest Hub. Um, NBC's uh, Trial and Error was canceled. That was canceled a long time ago. Life in Pieces was canceled after four seasons, and it's uh, currently airing its fourth season right now. So now I have to subscribe to CBS All Access just to watch that, the last season. That's a great show. Check it out. But we knew that was canceled a long time ago. <laughs> We know these things are canceled <laughs> if they don't air for a long time <laughs> and no one says anything about them. Whiskey Cavalier was canceled. Never seen that show in my life. I don't want to talk about Constance Wu because uh, after reading about her, uh, I have, uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. She tweeted angry thing. If you don't know, Constance Wu, star of Fresh Off the Boat with a bunch of other people, including Randall Park, Chelsea Crisp, and uh, Ray Weiss. And she tweeted uh, when the show was renewed uh, a bunch of anti I don't want to be on the show things. And then she came back and said, no, I was just very frustrated. And and I really love being on the show. But uh, and this is very important. She said, but uh, this working on the show stopped me from doing this big special project I wanted to do. And a lot of people called her out because, there's you know, there's a lot of actors in the world who can't even land a job. And she's complaining that she has one and she can't do another job. She has a good paying job. You know how much a 22 episode series pays on broadcast? Insane numbers. And she got to do Crazy Rich Asians and she has two more Crazy Rich Asians coming. Like, come on. 
Apparently, she's really difficult to work with. I'm not going to. Those are just rumors. I don't know. But still, it's very strange to see. Uh, I want to skip ahead really quick before I get to these last two stories. Speaking of broadcasting, <laughs> this comes from Deadline, written by my friend, my good friend, Elian Riva. CW Netflix deal is not being renewed with networks and new shows to be shopped individually. So, a couple of years ago, in 2011, the CW uh, and Netflix got together and they said, and CW said, hey, why don't we, no, was it 2011? Yeah, it was 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take our shows and put them on Netflix? And CW and Netflix said, all right, cool. And then they also said, but wait a minute, wouldn't it be great? Because we're, we're young, we're hip, we're teen-centric. Or we have the 18 to 34 uh, demographic. Wouldn't it be great if we took our show, our show's end, you know, in May sometimes, mostly May. What if we took that show and eight days after it aired? We put it on Netflix. And Netflix said, even better, baby. They shook hands. They spit in hands and they shook hands and cut each other's hands and shook hands again. <laughs> they shook hands three times. And that's the deal that was started. After eight days, shows that were on CW that ended their seasons would move on to Netflix. So you can watch them all. You can watch everything there within a matter of eight days. Uh, and then that deal was uh, redone again in 2016. Um. And I believe at that time in 2016 is when the CW removed its shows from Hulu. It didn't re it didn't do an impact with Hulu. Uh, keep in mind, CW was owned by CBS and Warner Media. It wasn't say Warner Brothers, but I think it's now just Warner Media. So now these new shows that the CW is doing, Batwoman, Katie Keene, and the new Nancy Drew series, which I'm sure is going to have all beautiful people and it's all going to be about sex and betrayal or some crap. They're all going to be shopped individually. So the Batwoman series could eventually, well probably will, go to uh, DC Universe, the streaming site. Katie Keene could go to Hulu. Nancy Drew could go to Amazon. Uh, actually... And then, the, and then, as for the shows that are already f- from the CW on, that are on Netflix right now, they're most likely going to stay there for the rest of their eternity. But we're no longer going to get immediately two weeks after the airing, the season finale airing. We're not going to get that anymore on Netflix. So there you go. Uh, it's a, it, was a, it was a beneficial pact. This comes from Nelly. The relationship has been beneficial to both sides. Riverdale's ratings spiked at the start of season two on the CW was attributed to the exposure of the first season on Netflix. There's only 13 episodes then. Now it's a 22 episode series. No, uh, season series. 22 episodes season series. The end of the CW deal is certainly a blow to Netflix, but not unexpected. Disney it's going to put out Disney Plus. <laughs> There's just a whole bunch of stuff that I already know about. And then uh, soon Office and Friends is going to leave. So uh, we we know these things are going to leave. Um, I'm going to say it one more time. And I'll, and, I, and I'll probably say it again every episode for the rest of this show's run. Netflix should just get into the originals game. Stop acquiring stuff. I understand it's very important to you to have acquisitions but it just doesn't make sense anymore in a world where it's all about premium shows. I was going to say content and I was going to punch myself in the face. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, They should always, they should just rely on their power, which is their reachability because Netflix is everywhere uh, and it's cheap. It's still $12 as of this recording. In two years, it'll probably be 15. Actually, no, I think it's 13 now. It's supposed to go up a dollar. Regardless, in two years' time, and no, in a year and a half because they just changed the price. In a year and a half, two years' time, two years' time, it'll be $15. Count on it. I think one of, my, one of the interesting things, one of the things I think is that there are two things that can really set a streamer apart from another streamer. Uh, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, Crackle, 
the rest. Uh, there's one thing that YouTube has that none of these streamers have, and it's the ability to speed up their videos. And I understand sometimes, well, actually, you should never watch a TV show with sped up. That's what I do for work. I watch TV shows that are sped up, essentially, that are uh, 1.5 times their speed. But YouTube, I subscribe to Google Play Music. I get to watch all the YouTube videos I want with no ads. So that means I, I watch a lot of tech reviews and a lot of video game reviews. I don't watch gameplay because I'm not 15 years old or 7 uh, or however old the demographic is. But uh, it's very it's very um, useful to hit the 1.5 times speed or sometimes 1.75 or times 2 and see these videos that are 10 minutes long be shortened down to 6 minutes because I sped it up. And I can understand it and I can get it all. So I think that a streaming app that can adopt that in a way, you know, skipping over an intro sequence. Yeah, that's cool. Having autoplay. Yeah, that's cool. Having an, another lineup like in the, like Hulu, you know, Hulu has the next episode of the show. And then after that, it has shows that it think you'll like. That's cool. But the ability to speed up a show. That's or a movie. That's really cool. That's amazing. That's tech. That's thing. And then the second thing I think would be good for a streamer to d- adopt. Jesus Christ Almighty in heaven, slamming doors like you never lived. Uh, <laughs> another thing that I think that would be interesting for um, uh, a streamer to adopt would be live sports, obviously. Uh, whoever uh, whoever does that first and cheap. Obviously, you can get ESPN Plus, but I'm talking about the big boys. Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. All right. Moving on. Uh, I don't want to dwell on this too much. <laughs> but we got some more layoffs over at Disney slash Fox. I think it was last month or the week, uh, the month before that, that Disney fired about 4,000 people with job redundancies within the company. Uh, this week, 5,000 people lost their jobs. So that's uh, 9,000 people. Uh, at some point, it's going to be 10,000, you know, because how dare they end at nine? Uh, yeah, so there's going to be more layoffs coming. It's just sad to see this, but hey. Deadpool gets to kiss Spider-Man and and flick Hulk's butt. (laughs) Whatever they do, whatever these things do anymore. I don't know. It's just sad. It's sad to to continue to see these things fail. And also, learn that uh, when The Simpsons... The Simpsons isn't going to be on FX anymore. FXX anymore. I guess Family Guy's taking that slot and Bob's Burgers, too. Uh, Simpsons is moving over to Freeform, which I don't understand. Why? Wouldn't it do well on FXX, or couldn't it do well on both? But no, they're just they're they're moving over to Freeform, uh, and they're probably not going to have all the marathons, obviously, and it's probably going to get air once or twice a week, if that. Sucks. And finally, this comes from Adweek, written by Jason Lynch. After honing TBS's comedic voice, Warner Media risks damaging the brand by adding dramas. It's very late. I should go to bed. So it was announced at this week's Upfronts that uh, TBS is canceling a bunch of shows, including Andrew Tribeca and uh, some other shows. But it, re- it obviously, it, well, oddly enough, it renewed a, a show that was supposed to be a limited series called Miracle Workers with Daniel Radcliffe and... Um, Steve Buchimi. Yeah, it's pronounced Buchimi. And a bunch of other people. It's for, it's a great show. Um that I didn't finish. <laughs> but uh so they canceled a bunch of a couple of comedies, not a bunch, just a couple of comedies. And they moved Samantha B to ten PM. I really think that T B S should pick up Busy Phillips' show. I think that'd be a great gift for them. And they can have Samantha on Wednesdays and Busy on Tuesdays. Just knock her down to one episode a week. But it can be like a live type thing. Uh, well, no. People are busy. 
Uh, but now TBS is going to get some corporate synergy from AT&T's Warner Media, and they're going to bring in some dramas from other networks. And by other networks, I mean networks that are within the Turner family. Warner Media unveiled plans at its own presentation Wednesday morning to begin blurring the branding of its own biggest networks, a risky move that could undo years of effort to craft TBS's comedy brand. And that's because TBS will begin airing original dramas next year, starting with Snowpiercer, which is based on a 2013 movie. Snowpiercer is based on, is, is, uh, coming from the TNT network. It's not doing well over there, so they said, hey, why not move it to TBS, <laughs> the comedy network? Uh, this comes from Kevin Riley, president of TBS and TNT, and chief creative officer, Warner Media, direct to consumer. Here we go. That's a very long title. Part of the transformation is how we think about networks. We're going to be more flexible in our programming strategy and go where the audience is and use every programming tool and asset we have to maximize delivery and connection. TBS, TNT, and True TV are stronger if they're less bound by a single brand position or genre. Uh, oddly enough, two of those are comedy channels, True TV and uh, TBS. Uh, let's see. Riley said he'll use March Madness and its audience of 125 million, including next year's NCAA Men's Championship game, to launch Snowpiercer next spring. The same approach that boosted TBS comedy the last OG two years ago. But dramas won't be the only genre suddenly popping up on TBS. The network will simulcast the upcoming TNT series Chasing the Cure Live, which host Ann Curry called, I don't really give a crap. Uh, it's very sad that they're doing this. I don't know. I don't understand why they want to do this. Uh, but you know what? Whatever. Riley acknowledged that TBS is a top five, a quote unquote, top five network on cable. But if viewers who expect to find comedy on the network instead tune in and discover new laugh free content, they may go elsewhere for the comedy needs, which is great news for Comedy Central and IFC. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't approve of this. This is stupid. Uh, this is like when Viacom, the this corporate synergy thing that they, that these these networks do, where they think airing the same episode of a show simulcast on multiple networks is is easy for everybody. It's not. Uh, Viacom did that on TV Land several times. TV Land and BET and uh, Comedy Central and all these other the networks that they own and Nickelodeon, all the networks they own, they'll they'll air you know and CMT they'll air like Nashville, like if it's if it's a season premiere they'll air Nashville on all on every single one of those channels or they'll air uh, the, when Jim Gaffigan had a show the Jim Gaffigan show they'll air, they aired all of that. <sighs> it's just yeah it's so frustrating to see all this happen. And for you know for them to think oh this is this is this will be good. This is what's going to beat streaming. Or this is what's going to compete with streaming. Because at this point, they can't beat streaming. Anyway, listen, it's late. So I'm going to go to bed. Uh, if you like what you heard here or saw, head on over to the website, supercomedy.com. That is it's back up now uh, after a couple of weeks down. <laughs> and now Squarespace is charging me $6 more to keep it up. <laughs> I was paying the $10 that I was paying uh, six years ago. And now it's $16. Jesus, good lord, man, that's crazy. CplusComedy.com has got some stuff over there. Head on over to youtube.com slash cplusComedy to see a video version of the show as well as news time. This week's news time is about joke theft. Conan was in a, th- he's going to be in a joke theft trial and then he settled out of court. And then I wrote a story about why joke theft exists. You know, why we take it seriously, actually. I'm sorry. Not why it exists. Why we take it seriously. And I've already shot next week's episode. Believe it or not, it's Thursday. I haven't shot an episode ahead of time in months. Um, yeah, really a long time. I haven't done it in a long time. I shot one ahead of time. Uh, like I said, I got some stuff to do. <laughs> it's No, it's sad stuff. So um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, definitely check it out. It'll be next week. <laughs> okay, shut up. All right, I'm going to go to bed. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Bye.